Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name You're rich in love And you're slow to anger Your name is great And your heart is for all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord of oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His home strength is fading, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending, ten thousand years and then forevermore, bless the Lord of oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name Bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name.
brothers and sisters welcome to the sunday service i hope you all had a great week in lord and we are excited to be renewed by god's word this morning i want to encourage you with the scripture today let's read uh, from uh, the book of second corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 to 18 therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving us in eternal glory that far outweighs them all so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal so we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day brothers and sisters we often get discouraged as we show the signs of aging like when we start losing our hair and going bald and you know when we when our uh, skin starts wrinkling we remember that we are getting old we wish we could never age and carry our youthful radiance forever but bible here says that even though our outward self is wasting away god is renewing us day by day god restores and renews our spirit and every day we are a new creation and ultimately it is our inner self that's going to last forever as the outer self perishes 
let us try and join this and and let us fill ourselves with excitement as we as we listen from the word of god today today uh ramesh brother will be leading us in communion and christy brother will be preaching from the god's word i pray that we'll open our hearts and listen to the message let's pray <coughs> Heavenly gracious Father, thank you for this time, Lord, and thank you that we're able to meet here today and uh, take part in this fellowship. Lord, uh, thank you for your word, Lord, and thank you for, uh, for 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 the message that you have planned for us today. Lord, I pray you're gonna open our hearts, Lord, and listen to the message and take it into our hearts and work on it. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you're gonna help us fight our battles and get strength from you. and i pray that you're going to be with ramesh brother and and christy brother as well as they are leading us into the service please be with us and guide us in christ most holy name i pray amen good morning brothers and sisters this is a time for communion at this time we will remember the cross and we will examine what a cross means to us to prepare our hearts let us turn our bibles to the book of first peter chapter 1 we'll read verses 18 and 19 first peter 1 verse 18 for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious blood of christ a lamb without blemish or defect here the verse says that christ is a lamb without defect or blemish we shall also read one more scripture in first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 the scripture says for christ our passover lamb has been sacrificed here the scripture says christ is our passover lamb now the passover was very important festival for the jews it reminded the jews how god saved those first born jews from death in egypt god had instructed those jews to sacrifice the lamb and apply its blood on the door posts of every jewish house that's how they were saved from the death those first born jews were not saved because they admired that lamb saying yeah this lamb is very cute they were not saved because they cared for the lamb they were not saved because they loved the lamb they were saved because they sacrificed the lamb and the blood had to be shed now down the generations jews observed continue to observe every year the passover festival now there are two things about passover lamb number 1 passover lamb must be perfect without blemish or defect number 2 passover lamb must be slain sacrificed blood must be shed the passover lamb was chosen on the 10th day of the month and then it was watched very carefully until it was slain on the 14th day of the month and it was sacrificed on the 14th day and the blood was shed that's how they used to commemorate the passover now the scripture says that Christ is our passover lamb 
scriptures several scriptures says that christ was sinless he was perfect first john talks of in him is no sin and he was a perfect lamb for the sacrifice brothers and sisters many people admire jesus as a greatest teacher and many more respect him the kind of example exemplary life that he lived now let's think we are not saved by christ the example we are not saved by christ the teacher we are saved by christ the substitute jesus christ substituted himself in place of us he shed his precious blood on the cross for us he saved us from our sins let's not forget that because of his precious blood we are redeemed of from our sinful life that's what that's what the scripture says and we must be grateful and thankful for the precious blood that he had shed on the cross even as we take this bread that represents his body and the wine that represents his blood let's remember that he redeemed us he was perfect he was sinless he shed his blood precious blood so that we could be redeemed and we can have eternal life let us pray for the communion our heavenly father thank you so much for this morning thank you lord that we could come together and remember jesus and his sacrifice for us as the scriptures say that he is lamb without blemish or defect and he shed his precious blood so that we can we could be redeemed of our empty way of life from our sinful ways thank you lord for forgiving my sins thank you lord for forgiving all of our sins through the blood of jesus we are so grateful to you that you bore all the pain and sufferings on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life we thank you o god almighty for the love that you have shown on the cross thank you lord that you broke your body so that we could be healed from our sins we are so grateful to you lord for the amazing love and the compassion that you have shown to us as we take this bread and wine i pray help us god to remember the sacrifice that you have done for us and help us to be grateful lord almighty and we will ever remember the precious blood that is shed for us on the cross we thank you so much for this time we love you god we pray in jesus name amen
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna in the highest. Good morning, brothers, sisters, and friends. I hope you are all doing well. And uh, these days, uh, we've been uh, seeing a lot of miracles happening in our lives. And we have prayed for many miracles. And uh, the latest one was uh, Dinesh. And uh, amazingly, how God delivered Dinesh. And uh, he's at home now. And thank you so much for your all your prayers. Definitely, our God is a miracle-working God. And the title of my today's message is Jesus, the Miracle Worker. We've been seeing from the book of uh, Matthew and uh, today's uh, lesson is taken from chapter 8 and 9. So, as I told you, none of us will be sitting here without experiencing at least one miracle in our lives. And uh, when I think about my life, after me becoming a disciple, that is the biggest miracle. And after that, I believe the biggest uh, miracle that happened in my life was um, myself being stung by uh, more than 100 honeybees in a forest. And that was a horrible experience. And uh, definitely, uh, I prayed a lot and different people prayed uh, during that time. And I could see God del delivering me uh, miraculously. And uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have been alive today. So I'm sure many of us will have stories like this to tell about miracles happening in our lives. And today, uh, we're going to uh, see from book of Matthew, chapter 8 and 9. If you look at these chapters, uh, one amazing thing is these two chapters are uh, kind of a marathon of miracles happening in these two chapters. Uh, in chapter 8, we can see Jesus cleansing a leper and then, gen then Jesus heals a centurion servant. Jesus heals many. 
wind and waves uh, obey Jesus. And in chapter 9, we see Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic and two demon-possessed men healed, a girl restored to life and a woman healed, and uh, two blind men healed. Then we see a mute man uh, speaking. And uh, there are so many miracles happening actually in these two chapter chapters. And through all this, Matthew is showing us that Jesus is the uh, foretold Messiah in the Old Testament. And all those messianic prophecies are being fulfilled uh, in Jesus' life. And no wonder, you know, we can believe that Jesus is the Lord and the King of the universe. And he possesses the power over sickness, sin, demons, nature, and everything else in the universe. And we know that there were different kinds of miracle workers uh, in the past also, throughout the history actually. Even today, we hear about a lot about uh, miracle workers and it excites us. Whenever we hear about miracles, people are excited. But Jesus was a very unique miracle worker. He did all the miracles, not for himself, not to show uh, his power and uh, uh, not to prove something, but uh, he did miracles out of compassion towards people. That's what making different uh, Jesus different from others actually. And uh, through this, he touched the lives of many people through all his miracles. And today uh, we need to think about uh, miracles. When we hear about a miracle worker, we need to think about what is the motive behind that? What is the purpose behind this miracle? And that, that will help us not to be you know, overexcited about miracles actually. And uh, uh, I would like to share a story about uh, Jackie Pullinger. Maybe you heard about her. She was born in 1944 as a, and uh, also was a Protestant missionary to Hong Kong and founder of the St. Stephen Society. She has been ministering in Hong Kong since 1966. And uh, uh, she has written a book called Chasing the Dragon. And that, in that book, uh, she talks about uh, the kind of ministry she did. She has spent her life with uh, the poor and destitute, trad gang members, heroin and opium addicts. She has helped thousands to come of drugs through the power of God. She has seen transformation in numerous lives and has made a huge impact on the city of Hong Kong. Jackie wrote, I have spent over half my life in a dark, foul-smelling place because I had a vision of another city ablaze with light. Uh, it was my dream. There was no more crying, no more death or pain. The sick were healed, addicts set free, the hungry filled. There were families for orphans, homes for the homeless and new dignity for those who lived in shame. I had no idea how to bring this about, but with visionary zeal, imagined introducing the walled city people to the one who could change it all. That is none other than Jesus. Someone said, vision is a holy discontent, a deep dissatisfaction with what is combined with a clear grasp of what could be. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision is a nightmare. But vision combined with action can change the world. Jesus was the best visionary who combined his vision with action. He did many miracles to touch the lives of people, to change their lives for eternity, not just for a physical well-being. First point of my message today is the miracle of heart change. Jesus was showing how the subjects of the kingdom could be blessed if they accept him as their king and the Lord. Matthew 8, 1 to 4, uh, if you read, you know, in that uh, Jesus healing a leper over, when Jesus came down from the Mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing. He said, 
Be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift of Moses. The gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. He was filled with compassion for people. He didn't just heal the leper from far, but he went close enough to touch and heal him. This man was a man who had been isolated from the society. A leper had to cry out, unclean, unclean, to cause people not to approach him too closely and to be defiled that way. Can you ever imagine yourself being in that position of that leper? It's difficult for me. It's horrific to think that way. But just to see how uh, this man, though he was so unclean, according to the society in those days, Jesus, you know, confidently and compassionately reached out to him and touched him. And we need to be so grateful that we have a God who is so compassionate, who wants to touch and touch the lives of people. This man saw his own unworthiness and requested Jesus, if he was willing, he could heal him. But Jesus was more than willing to do it. We need healing today, brothers, sisters and friends. But we need more of emotional healing these days. We need healing in our heart. Because we see more than ever before, People going through emotional pain, trauma, stress, and depression these days. Just take the crime stats of India. It's really uh, horrific. So many people are being abused every day. Year 2019 had 4 lakh people reported crimes committed against women. Unreported are many. 88 rape cases per day. 156 lakh abortions every year. Every hour, one student is committing suicide in India. 21 lakh people live with HIV in India. These are the stats that are very shocking, at the same time, very discouraging also. Why all this happening, you might ask. Mostly because of unmet needs of people, the abuses they have gone through, the lack of love they have received from their families, and many of them coming from dysfunctional families. It could be including me and you. Jesus touched him, this man, and healed him. Jesus' healing was not just physical, but emotional and spiritual also. He touched lives of people. Our King and the Lord of the universe, uh, the ultimate healer, can heal not only our diseases, but our hurts, our feelings, insults, abuses, or whatever, insecurities, whatever we have gone through, God can heal it. Jesus can heal us today. What we need today is the change of people's heart. That's the need of the hour. Change lives and change hearts and revived attitudes are the miracles that we need today, brothers and sisters. Look around us. People have lost all sensitivity towards sin. They have hardened their hearts. For them, crime has become a lifestyle. They don't know God and his love towards them. That's why all this are happening. Is it happening only in the world around us? Or are we also becoming like that over the years? Remember, church is a cross-section of the society. Even though we are chosen and called out of the world. In the following passage, we will hear what God had to tell his chosen people, that is the people of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 24 to 32 will read in an IV version. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. 
Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and make it plentiful and will not bring famine upon you. I will increase the fruit of the trees and the crops of the field so that you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nations because of famine. Then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and you will love yourselves for your sins and detestable practices. I want you to know that I am not doing this for your sake, the Sovereign Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord. Be ashamed and disgraced for your conduct. People of Israel, in verse 31 32, God's chosen ones, the people of Israel, while they were in captivity in Babylon, they were going away from God towards the pagan practices uh, of people around them. They were indulging in all kinds of pagan practices. And it says at one point of time, even the glory of God departed Israel. And that's the time God's word came through Ezekiel to the people of Israel about the great plan of God to give them a new heart and a new mind. God said his people should be ashamed of their sins. The people had become so collapsed uh, that they had lost all sensitivity towards sin. They had to remember their sins, then despise them and finally repent of them. That's what God's requirement was for them. As we examine our lives, uh, brothers and sisters, we may find that we too have lost our sensitivity towards certain sins. Losing sensitivity means becoming casual towards that particular sin. But if we measure ourselves against God's standards of right living, we will be ashamed of them. To gain sensitivity, regain sensitivity, we must first recognize our sin for what it is. Sometimes we are very good at recognizing others' sin than our own sin. Someone said, we are good judges of others and very good advocates of ourselves. We must apologize for displeasing God and ask his forgiveness. That's when we see the fruit of the Holy Spirit active in our lives back again. How active the uh, Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your lives, brothers and sisters and friends. Can others see your gentleness, your patience, perseverance and all the fruit of the Spirit, Holy Spirit in you? Just think about yourself. What is that sin for which you have lost sensitivity over the years? Is it lust, a slander, jealousy, anger, bitterness, lack of love, hatred, pride? And the list goes on. Think about ourselves. Which is that sin that I have lost sensitivity towards? When I look at my own life, I remember the times I used to make phone calls from my office to Jerry Michael who studied the Bible and was discipling me. And that was to confess my sins and temptations. And But, you know, now, if I, you know, if I talk about myself, I am not that eager to make a phone call and to talk about my life and my sin. And I need to put effort. I need to, you know, uh, uh, remind myself at times. So I can see that I'm also losing sensitivity towards certain sins in my life, which I need to repent and get back. Today, the miracles that we really need, brothers and sisters, are the miracles to change our heart, our attitude and our motives. The leper's words here in the story were, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. That's what he exactly told Jesus. In fact, he was a Jew and he was supposedly one of the subjects of the kingdom of Jesus as a king. He could have had the attitude, it is my right to be healed by Jesus because I'm a Jew. But he realized his unworthiness in coming even closer to Jesus. Today, are we growing in our attitude of unworthiness? Do we often remember, I am an unworthy servant? Or do we often think, 
about our rights as a disciple. Have you heard about heart transplantation? Few times it happened in the place that we are in Cochin. Uh, there was a famous doctor in a hospital nearby and uh, few times he has conducted this heart transplantation. And what happens is uh, from a far off hospital, um, heart of a person who would have uh, brain dead would be brought in a helicopter or, uh, or in an uh, ambulance or whatever, you know, very fast will be brought to this hospital and quickly the heart transplantation, heart transplantation was done and it was successful. You know, but today you know, God is saying we need a spiritual heart transplantation. Ezekiel 36 verse 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, if you read, God promised uh, to restore Israel not only physically, but also spiritually and emotionally. God, by this, by his time, had done a number of miracles, including parting of Red Sea, uh, parting of Jordan River and manna from heaven and so many other miracles God had already done for Israel. But all these things were forgotten by them and couldn't change their heart ultimately. So today we also need to think uh, when we hear about miracles. Miracles may not change our hearts, though at times it excites us. What they needed was a changed heart. To accomplish this, God would give them a new heart for following him and put his spirit within them to transform and empower them to do his will. Because at times they were not able to do his will on their own. Though it was a promise for them, this is also a promise for us. As uh, you know, Jesus has come down you know, through Jesus' birth and uh, by the giving of the Holy Spirit in our lives, this is more applicable for us today. Uh, you know, to have a changed heart. The miracle of heart, plan, plan, heart transplantation that we need. After living as a disciple for many years and experiencing many miracles in our lives and then, and then enjoying an abundant life and the privileges that we get being by being part of the church, the body of Jesus, we can easily forget all the benefits and become hardened in our hearts like Israel. That is the danger that we might face as a Christian over a period of time. You know, when I think about myself, I can see how much uh, ungrateful I am at times thinking about the things that I don't have than being grateful about things that I have uh, by being a disciple of Jesus. You know, having Jesus in our lives, you know, we can definitely hope for a changed heart and a changed spirit. But we need to have the desire to have a changed heart. That is very important. And that's when God also can work in our life powerfully. No matter how messed up our life feels today, God offers you a new and fresh heart. Have you stubbornly resisted his love and leading? Have you refused his plans for you by not surrendering to his will. The Holy Spirit can make you tender and receptive to him again today. One practical step that you can take towards this is to write down the number of blessings that you received and also to write down how is your response to all those blessings that you have received in your lives. The one thing that we all need to remember is only if you are grateful for your blessings you can become a blessing in others' life. It is more better to be a blessing for others than we ourselves receive, receiving blessing from God. But God is definitely willing to uh, give us both, provided we have a desire to be a blessing for others. If you know or not, there is a connection with our attitude and the miracles that Jesus can do in our lives. If you look at uh, this chapter 8 verses 5 onwards, 
when jesus had entered capernaum a centurion came to him asking for help lord he said my servant lies at home paralyzed suffering terribly jesus said to him shall i come and heal him the centurion replied lord i do not deserve to have you come under my roof but jesus just say the word and my servant will be healed for i myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me i tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes i say to my servant do this and he does it when jesus heard this he was amazed and said to those following him truly i tell you i have not found anyone in israel with such great faith you know what is outstanding here is uh, actually the man's attitude towards jesus authority he uh, though he was a pagan not a jew you know he recognized jesus authority in his life and the life of his servant you know that's why jesus was amazed at his faith also actually and he was willing to heal uh, this man's servant and at times jesus couldn't do much miracles because of the lack of faith of people due to the wrong attitude of people towards jesus in mark 6 5 to 6 if you read uh, he could not do many miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them he was amazed at their lack of faith then jesus went around teaching from village to village he couldn't do many miracles in his own hometown because the people over there didn't have a great attitude towards jesus because they uh, kind of looked down on jesus being a, a son of a carpenter and he himself being a carpenter so they didn't have also enough faith in jesus that he can do miracles in their lives and that's where we also need to think about you know our attitude how is our attitude towards jesus and uh, towards each other the second point is the need for miracle workers you know i'm going a little faster i'm not reading the scripture but in um, matthew chapter 9 verse 9 and 10 talks about Matt, uh, jesus calling matthew the tax collector from his office and he immediately followed jesus and uh, his life life being changed so much you know from a hated sinner he becomes a lovable friend to many people and he is celebrating his the miracle of his life change along with his friends you know what a great miracle to see you know many people would have been so appreciative of jesus doing such a great miracle in his life and um, you know uh, jesus coming to uh, 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 the closure of the, all these miracles with these words it's very important to listen to jesus towards the end of it matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to 38 jesus saying Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few ask the lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field you know here we see jesus after doing all these miracles felt still felt compassionate towards a huge lost world around him you know there are so many people still waiting for the miracles happening in his in their lives and healing happening in their lives and uh, uh, most of all that was you know uh, uh, these people being harassed and helpless that's the important point to be noticed over there that's why that's what jesus was focusing on not just uh healing them or doing some great miracles in their lives you know their lives being changed itself will be a great miracle and you know uh there were so many people if you see um uh, there were uh, so many pharisees and sadducees and people of the law they were all actually supposed to be the shepherds for these people but unfortunately they were not the good shepherds because they didn't have a great attitude people wouldn't want to come closer to them because they were not compassionate towards them and that's why all the people flocked towards jesus because they could feel the compassion they could feel the mercy in jesus eyes towards them and 
many people were touched by Jesus. Today, what Jesus needs is not some workers, but workers with great attitude, great attitude of compassion, unconditional love and mercy in their hearts to touch the lives of people. Because today, many people are in need of emotional healing than physical healing. And there's no one to reach out to them, to comfort them and to show compassion towards them. Many are abused, many are harassed, many are helpless, many are oppressed. So many are without direction in their lives, brothers and sisters. Today, you know, if you and me could be a great, great worker, towards these people or for them that will be the greatest miracle that can happen in their lives and as we celebrate Christmas uh, uh, these days it will be great if we can reach out to people and celebrate the our life change along with them to give them hope in their life Christmas is all about hope and this is a, what a great opportunity for us to give people hope in their lives and I'm sure Jesus is waiting to see such kind of miracle workers so that people could be healed physically, spiritually and emotionally in every way possible. Because many are those who are waiting for such miracles to happen in their lives. So the first point that I talked about is the miracle of heart change. And uh, the second point is that we talked about is um, Jesus still need miracle workers today. Jesus himself being a great miracle worker, I believe he can use each one of us in a great way, provided we have great attitudes and great hearts for them. Let's have a great week ahead, brothers and sisters, and great month. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much, Christy, for sharing God's word with all of us. I love the miracle topic. And I'm sure all of us have seen many miracles in our life, the way God has worked. He has protected us. He has brought us out of trouble. Uh, he has mended so many broken relationship. And these are the real miracle that miracles that happens in our life. You know, change of heart. I think this is the biggest miracle that can happen in anybody's life. There are so many struggles that we have. And uh, as you shared in your message that how change of heart and how we are the miracle worker, how we can bring hope to this world. And thank you once again for sharing such an inspiring lesson. A couple of announcements, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, today, there's going to be a leaders meeting at 6 p.m. And the details will be shared uh, by your family group leaders. So requesting all the leaders to kindly join the leaders meeting. Uh, 20th of December, uh, there is going to be a family group wise uh, service. Uh, or the Christmas celebration. So please reach out to your family group leader and find more details about it. 25th, uh, the Christmas day is going to be a combined church-wide recorded service we will have. So more details to follow on this. And at the same time on 3rd of January, also we will have a combined church service. Along with these uh, various meetings, I just want to remind everyone uh, to remember poor and also to contribute uh, to the needs of the church. Let's pray and end the service. Father, thank you for being uh, a comforter in our life. Thank you so much, God, for uh, taking care of all the needs of our life. Thank you so much, God, for, for um, showing so many miracles and teaching us through the miracles that Jesus performed. God, I'm grateful for all the ways that you have uh, been merciful to all of us. Father, we pray that change our hearts with the struggles that we have in our life. And God, help all of us to be the worker that you chose all of us to be, Lord. And thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much, Father, for your grace and mercy in our life. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.